Hey there, it's Keely, and welcome back to my YouTube channel if you've been here before. If not, welcome. So today, as you can see by the title, we're going to be making some Fallout characters in The Sims 4. So as you can see, we've already jumped off with our iconic German Shepherd friend, Dogmeat. Of course, we've got to make him, you know, adventurous and loyal and smart. And this was the closest, like, configuration or, like, coat pattern that was closest to dog meat, but then I wanted to do some editing as well to kind of make his fur look more like the actual Fallout 4 video game. And so with the new show coming out and everything, I decided to get into playing one of the games in addition to, obviously I like to play The Sims too, but I started playing Fallout 4 because there was a deal on Steam a couple weeks ago for like $4 for the game. So I was like, all right, sweet. So I've been playing that and I want to make some of those characters, of course, in The Sims 4. And I've also watched the show at this point. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of the Fallout show? Do you play any of the games? Like, tell me all your comments, thoughts, feelings. Um, but yeah, so I'll be making those main characters also in The Sims coming up soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And I'd love to hear some other recommendations because I've only ever played like the Fallout Shelter video, like a little app. And then now Fallout 4, which I'm pretty much just still at the beginning of. So, you know. Put your recommendations down below. Yes, yeah, so we made dog meat. So now onto our next character, which is pretty iconic. And I know he gets a lot of hate because there's always another settlement that needs assistance. And I get it. I personally think that Preston Garvey is kind of nice. Like I like Preston, you know, and when it comes to all of the different factions you can choose from, I feel like I would, if I had to pick one, probably go more with the Minutemen. I feel like they have more of a a better view for, you know, the Commonwealth. Although it is very, very annoying. I do have to agree that Preston always wants to send you off on another quest. And I'm going to be honest, I've never even finished the first quest he was supposed to send me on. Um, what is it? To the factory or whatever. I tried to go there when I was like a level like four or five. And I was like, hmm, I do not think that I'm ready for this because I'm not very good at the game. So uh, yeah, let's just say I haven't went back. And I'm not really looking forward to Preston sending me to 20,000 other locations to help other settlements. So yeah, no, I do get the frustration as to why players don't like that. Um, but I thought he's kind of a permanent fixture. So like, I kind of have to make him, you know what I mean? So here we are making the one and only Preston Garvey, who's going to send you on 20,000 different missions to 20,000 different settlements. Um, so I wanted to find some like distressed gear and different things like that. And so I thought, all right, as you'll see in a little bit, we'll kind of try to dive into the um, horse ranch pack to find some clothing. And as I'm recording this, <laughs> as I'm recording this, my partner is outside the window telling me that she loves me very much. And it's very sweet. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, so here we are editing more just on facial details and things like that before we get into any more of the clothes. Like I said, I kind of want to go for horse ranch to see what we can do with that to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic. I know there's some like dusty variants of those clothing items or like dirty variants of the clothing items from horse ranch. So I thought that that would be some good clothing items that I had in mind while I was still like editing his face and stuff. So here I am looking for his hat, of course, which, you know, is likely going to be a hat from horse ranch. Because I feel like that kind of just goes with the theme that we're going for here. But yeah, so now onto the clothing, as I've been excitedly talking about. My mouse is like on the fritz right now, and I don't really know what's wrong with it. I'm thinking the battery is almost dead, but when I'm playing The Sims, <laughs> when I'm trying, you'll probably see this later in the video, when I'm trying to like do detail edit mode on like Sims faces and stuff, it like won't properly click on the elements that I wanted to click on. Or like, It'll click on it and then it'll like double click or something and I won't be able to do like what I wanted to do, which is super annoying. And it started happening during Fallout when I was playing that. So I thought that maybe it was just like, I don't know, I thought it was related to that, but then I realized it was also related to just regular functions on my computer. So I was like, you know what? Um, <laughs> I think it's my mouse because my touchpad was fine. So I need to fix that. I need another battery, but on to Preston's traits. So I feel like a, some, a lot of the traits that like the people in the wasteland have to have to survive don't really necessarily translate very well to the very, I want to say, less violent Sims. Um, of course, there's still pool ladders that can be removed, but, you know, in terms of things, it's way less violent than the wasteland. So I went with, with um, 
good and ambitious and loyal because Preston really wants to build up the Minutemen. He wants to help these settlers and, you know, he really just wants to make a difference and also make you help another settlement for the 30,000th time. And I wasn't really sure which aspiration to give him. So I kind of looked around because, like I said, a lot of these aren't really applicable to the type of things you have to do in Fallout. So I ended up looking at a bunch of these and I ended up deciding on... See how long it takes for me to pick the one that I wanted. Yeah, the country caretaker is the one I went with just because he kind of wants to, you know, he like walks around your settlement at Sanctuary and he wants you to help all these people. So I imagine that, you know, he would do something to the effect of like, you know, taking care of people. So that's that's kind of why I did that's a little bit of a stretch, but you know, we had to go for something. There's dog meat again. <laughs> but yeah, so we're looking at all those skin details. Those will come back in a little bit, as you'll see. For one of our other characters that I tried my best to look somewhat like they do in the game. So our next character is Piper. Like I said, I'm not very far into the game, so I only have a couple companions for me to choose from, and one of them is Piper. And so I wanted to go ahead and make her in The Sims as well, because I thought I can definitely get her hat and some of her, like, clothing accessories in the game. I feel like I could definitely make that happen. Um, to kind of get the look that she has going, like that, you know, news girl kind of look. So here we are looking for some different hairstyles to kind of, you know, get that mid-length kind of bob she's got going on with like a little bit of like waves to it, kind of. I really liked that hair, but it didn't really sit good with the hat. So I ended up choosing this one instead. And here I am looking for the red like coat that she wears. And so I searched through to try to find, like, the closest thing, and then I soon realized that, you know, after going through all these items, if I wanted a longer style coat, I was probably going to have to select a, um, a full body outfit. So here I am searching for that. And like I said, all the outfits that your sim, not your sim, that your character wears in the Wasteland or, like, the, that the other people wear in, like, Diamond City or whatever, typically tattered, and you don't have that option. Uh, I mean, there's equal lifestyle, but I love this coat. I feel like it's the closest thing you can get to what Piper actually wears, so I ended up going with that. Of course, I had to do the gloves. I wanted them to be more leathery, like those ones you can see, but they don't go fully up her arm, and her gloves go all the way up her arm. So I went with those instead, just because they go all the way up her arm. When I was looking for boots, there was this weird glitch with those, particular not those boots, the other boots, um, where they would, like, turn red around the top, like the jacket. I'm not really sure what that was about, so I was like, all right, I guess we're choosing a different boot. Um, but yeah, so Piper's kind of coming together now at this point, and I was excited to do her traits and her aspiration because for the, this time, I actually do have an aspiration I can give her that fits pretty good with what her ideals are in life and what she wants to do and her goals. So I was pretty thrilled about that compared to with Preston. I had kind of had to like just stretch things and make it work for the Sims. And we still have to do a lot of editing to her face because right now she does not look like Piper, but we're getting there. So bear with me. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this video so far and keep your eyes open and peeled for newer videos coming out soon in relation to Fallout and apparently dogs because you guys really love that when I do the greatest and with the dogs, especially the blue characters. So um, we're going to be revisiting that as well again since you guys love it so much. Um, but yeah, so now she's really starting to look more like Piper. You know, I had my reference uh, photo up and I was like, all right, how can I do the best that I can with this? You know, I'm no fancy special person here when it comes to create a sim. As you can see here, I'm struggling with my mouse. So we'll have to go back and fix that later with the trackpad. But um, yeah, you know, I thought I did a pretty okay job. So she's starting to come together. You know, just trying to find the eyebrows that I want and get them going the way that I want. Get the cheeks, you know, all that kind of stuff. Starting to look a lot more like Piper. I tried out some different hair colors, but then I was like, nah. So the writing aspiration is the one I gave her. Since she's a journalist, of course she's going to be nosy. She's more of a loner, you know, um, and she's a bookworm, which I thought all those traits fit her pretty good. Because other than hanging out with her, I believe it's her sister? Um, she kind of lives by herself, you know, she writes these articles and some of the people in Diamond City aren't really too fond of her at some points. So I thought that loner worked well for her. Of course, we're going to say that she likes research and debate and writing because she most certainly does. Um, and she can be a little mischievous at times. So I put that in there for her. Other than that, I think that was mostly what I put, but minus maybe family oriented because I believe it's her sister. Like I said, I'm not super far in the game. 
there's a lot I still have to learn. But yeah, so I think Piper turned out pretty good, to be honest, you know, working with what we got. All right, so on to our next character. And right now there's a bug in my game, and let me tell you, it's frightening. So bear with me. We, I, I know what the problem is, but it's frightening. So I have a, um, a mod in my game that is just basically like the CC eyelashes, but then I also have another mod that removes the base game eyelashes, uh, the EA eyelashes, because I think they're ugly. Um, but the problem is with mermaids and aliens, I think, if you have the, the mod that removes the EA eyelashes, it like gets rid of their whole face and it's just their teeth and it's so creepy. And in my um, 100 baby challenge, I took my air uh, to 6am to have a, like an alien baby and all the aliens had no heads and just teeth and it was the creepiest thing ever. So you want to check that out. <laughs> That's a whole nother video. You can find that on my 100 baby challenge uh, episode and playlist that I will link somewhere maybe. <laughs> but yeah, super creepy. So I was glad I was able to fix that pretty quickly. Now, I really, you know, you can't make a Fallout 4 like video without talking about Nick Valentine. And right now he's my companion. I go between either Nick or Dogmeat because I really don't like sometimes, obviously Dogmeat's kind of my favorite because Dogmeat doesn't care what you do. You can do whatever you want. He doesn't get happy or unhappy or say he's not gonna travel with you. But I do really like Nick as well. And so I really wanted to make him in The Sims, but the problem is, you know, you can't really make a synth in The Sims, and especially the type of synth that he is. You, know, you can make a servo, but then he's going to just be a robot. Like, he's not going to have any, like, external facial features like Nick Valentine does in the actual game. So here's where my other idea came in. I was like, what if I make him an alien? Because then I can get his, like, skin tone to be, like, that white color that he has, and then I can do maybe some, like, facial scars, like you see there, on that side to kind of mimic the idea of the scars he has showing the external like machine the internal machinery that he has so I thought okay if I do him as an alien like that's the only other kind of way that I could make it kind of happen so you know it's a little bit of a stretch but this was my attempt at making Nick Valentine in The Sims 4 so you know I didn't have any like kind of tattered outfits for him or like the trench coat unfortunately so I went with this outfit I thought it was pretty good and traits were a little tough because um yeah like I said sometimes the things from Fallout don't necessarily translate super well, but I was able to give him a computer like savant trait, which I thought was, or aspiration, which I thought was pretty representative of him because he's obviously really good with machinery and technology. So I thought that was great. Um, and then there was no like, you know, how do I describe it? Like I made him good and proper. Proper really isn't the best way for it, but you know, he has a moral compass compared to a lot of other like people you'll encounter in the wasteland so that's why I went with proper and outgoing um but yeah I couldn't just couldn't put my finger on the traits I exactly wanted and they weren't quite available so I had to kind of you know work around it a little bit give me some comments down below what other traits do you think I could have used for Nick Valentine um I'd love to hear your comments but yeah I spent a lot of time trying to figure out the last one um so I kind of kept going back and forth and I went with ambitious because, you know, he's all about solving these mysteries now. You don't know if the public is like mostly okay with him, like kind of, at least in Diamond City, because they know he's a synth. He's up front that he's a synth. Like there's no surprises. Um, so, you know, I kind of went with ambitious and the fact that he really wants to solve all these mysteries. People come for him for that and that kind of stuff. So since he's an alien, I had to do like, you know, a disguise. So I ended up looking up like some people had, I guess there's a mod you can do for Fallout where you can have like supposedly the person that like he's based on from 200 years ago as like Nick. So I looked that up and used his like quote unquote like human form to make his like disguise as an alien. But yeah, overall, I think he turned out pretty good, you know, uh, based on the resources that I had with The Sims, I was pretty happy with how he turned out, you know, trying to be creative with the scars and that kind of element. So our last character, at least for this iteration, if you guys really like this video and as I get further, I'd love to make some more characters as I get further in the storyline and I kind of get to know them better because there's so many characters in Fallout 4, like compared to a lot of the other like games that I'll do, like there are just so many named characters in the game. So it's like, I can't possibly make everybody, but if you have recommendations and you guys want to see more like this, comment down below some more Fallout 4 characters you want to see me make in The Sims 4 if you're interested. So... Our next character is going to be from Good Neighbor, and I actually really kind of liked her. She's a little bit, like, 
rough around the edges at first, but she kind of warms up to you and she's really smart and I really liked her. So, and she had an outfit that I knew I could greatly, or at least pretty closely recreate because her profession is in The Sims 4. And, you know, since a lot of people in Fallout are either raiders or, you know, like part of some faction with like tattered clothing, I was really excited to kind of recreate this kind of person who had a career that's in The Sims 4. So this is Dr. Amari, and this is the closest hairstyle I could get for her, and we're going to work on her face a little bit. This is where I was talking about my mouse was on the fritz. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so I went through, and I knew that there was a scientist outfit, so I really wanted her to have that, or like a doctor slash like scientist outfit, because she's like a neurobiologist or whatever. Um, and so I tried to look it up, but then I remembered it's actually locked behind like not a paywall, but like an experience wall of like, if you haven't unlocked it. So what I did is you can see now I have access to it. So what I did was I went out and I have a like all outfits unlocked, like cast character in my gallery account. So I just put her in, unlocked all the outfits and then deleted her out. So then Dr. Amari could have this outfit. And I was really happy too, because she has like just a hint of makeup, like not a lot, just a little bit. So I was excited to get some of the lip glosses to try to like recreate that. So she's kind of really coming together for me here. But yeah, as we near the end of the video, I really hope you guys enjoyed. And since she's so smart, I would imagine that she would want to have a degree and be super smart and stuff like that. So I put in that she likes research and debate. She would also like logic, but I couldn't select that. I made her a genius because she's really smart, you know, working in the memory den. When it comes to other traits, there wasn't one that was kind of like, like a little bit like rough on the surface, but like warms up to you later kind of traits. So I was like, hmm, you know, like, what do I want to do? I tried looking up more stuff about her and I didn't get too much. So these are the traits I ended up deciding on, like bookworm. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this video as we near the end, and I'd love to hear your comments about it. So yeah, I hope to see you in the next one, and thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Bye!